Hi, yeah, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel, first time you're passing through. Well, you know what to do. Well, maybe you don't. Um, you can subscribe, you can share, and you can like. And for my return subscribers, thank you as always for your support. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your emails. Thank you for your words of encouragement. Yeah, and I wanted to talk about the 107 thousand children who are in the UK illegally. Why are they in the UK illegally, you might ask, especially if they've been born in the UK. How can someone who is born in the UK be illegal, especially as children? Well, it's quite simple because as of the British Nationality Act in 1981, Anyone born on the soil after 1981, according to the British Nationality Act, was not automatically a citizen. You had to apply. If you're fortunate enough to have both parents who are British, then you don't have to worry. But you still, they're automatically British. But just supposing you are a British man and you've been dating a Caribbean or African woman, and you have a child, that, that British man will have to go and register that child. He will automatically be a citizen based on the father being British, but the child still needs to be registered, as I understand it. Now, if the mother is the citizen, then that's fine. But what I'm trying to say is, if you have a child born after 1982 and you cannot afford to register the child for whatever reason, at the moment it's gone up to £1,012, sterling pounds, £1,012. And that it has been deemed unlawful because it's preventing so many parents from registering their children, especially if they've got more than one. And what is the outcome of them not registering? That these children are undocumented and basically illegal. They've got the birth certificate to say that they're legal, legal in as much as they're born in the country, but as there's no birthright citizenship, they do not have any status. And you could almost say that they could be, well, I don't know what the worst case scenario will be. The thing is, it doesn't really affect them as children, but it will affect them as adults. They will have no access to education, no access to housing, no access to bank accounts, no access to DVLA, because they are undocumented. They'll be just like illegal immigrants. And the thing is, in this time, in this era when jobs are scarce and, you know, people haven't got that kind of money for citizenship to make their child citizen. But by not doing so, I mean, even if, even if they have to borrow, because by not doing so, you are putting your child's life in jeopardy. Now, I cannot imagine that being born on the soil, they could be deported. But I do understand, if I understand correctly, in Jamaica, if you're born in Jamaica, you're considered a Jamaican, you're considered a Jamaican. But also, if your parents are Jamaican and you can prove that they are Jamaican, you would be considered Jamaican and you can get a visa. That's what has, I understand it. Now, I'm just being hypothetical here. Now, just supposing, just supposing, they're going through all of their um, deportations. I mean, at the moment, they're starting off with foreign criminals. Just supposing they decide to go a bit further and decide to deport anyone who's not born in the UK. This is far-fetched, totally far-fetched. I'm trying to think about these children, okay? Just supposing they decide to deport anyone who is not a naturalized citizen, that anyone who's got, say, um, 
indefinite leave to remain, but they haven't done, bought their citizenship, or anyone who's got a residence of some sort or a legal visa, they're actually legally in the country, but they've decided for whatever reason, they're going to send them back. And just supposing that they decide that these children who have no status because they haven't been registered and they come from and their parents come from Jamaica, that Jamaica can have them. That they'll deport them to Jamaica, even though they're born in the UK because their parents are Jamaican. And technically, if their parents are Jamaican, the children can become Jamaican. Just supposing that that's how they decide to deal with the situation. The only thing is, is that it's not in all countries that they do that. And not all the children who are in this country illegally are black. And not all of these children who are in the country are Caribbean. We've got lots of different breaks up in ethnicity. But they're not going to leave it. Um, they're not just going to leave it out there, are they? They're going to have to do something about it. So what, how do you think that they're going to solve that crisis? Do you, have you got any ideas? I'd like to hear from them in the description. Um, I took this out of, oh, I'm going to put the link below. I didn't put the link on the document, but apparently more than 100,000 children. Oh, and guess what? Say Javid has resigned. And they've got some other bloke going in. Ooh. He served his purpose, mate. Psst. He'll probably be called an immigrant now. <laughs> Mind you, I think the new bloke has got an immigrant name as well. So anyway. <clears throat> More than 100,000 children in London without secure immigration status. Research finds. Sadiq Khan warns of another Windrush-style scandal if urgent action is not taken to secure UK status of tens of thousands of youngsters who live in Britain, who's lived in Britain all their lives. Why doesn't he just say, born in Britain? You see how they play around with words? Lived in Britain all their lives. Just call a spade a spade. They were born in the UK. Anyway. The research undertaken by the University of Wolverhampton found that an estimated 107,000 children and a further 26,000 18 to 24 year olds are living in London without secure immigration status. Now, I feel sorry for those who are 18 to 24 because because at least with the younger ones, they can they're not prevented from going to school and all that kind of stuff. But once you reach 18 to 24, all you're going to do is you're going to be a liability on your parents. Can't get a job, can't do nothing. Once an, under, once an undocumented child turns 18, they face the threat of deportation to a country they may never have visited. See it there? What did I tell you? What did I tell you? So what they'll go around doing, because every country's got different immigration laws. So it's a bit like Shamima Begum. Remember when they thought they could ship her back to Pakistan and let her have a Pakistani um, citizenship? But was it Pakistan? Any, I, I think it was Pakistan. But anyway, their rule, their immigration rule was not that the child of the mother or the father, I can't remember now. So she couldn't do that. So she had, I think she had to take on the citizenship of her husband. And she's lost the first part of the case, apparently. But my point is, is that they're talking about once a child turns 18, they face the threat of deportation to a country they may never have visited. But how the hell can you deport people who are born in the UK? How? But there again, Shamima Begum, and I and I I had a list of all these other British people who've been deported, and they're British, born in the UK.
So these people who they're thinking about deporting, they have to be deporting them only to countries that allow the child to accept the nationality of the parent. So that's what they'll be doing next. Dread in a Babylon. It estimates that overall 674,000 undocumented adults and children, which can include those who were born in the UK or have spent the majority of their life in the country, as well as those who are eligible for citizenship but cannot afford to apply for it, are living in the capital. More than 100,000 children in London do not have secure immigration status, despite more than half of them having been born in the UK, new research shows. Sadiq Khan warned, I've said that already, another Windrush star scandal could be on the horizon. After a study he commissioned found that tens of thousands of youngsters in the capital were at risk of being unable to access higher education, open bank accounts, or secure housing or employment. You know, at one point they were asking um, children to bring in their passports. And then it was called some kind of discrimination or something, so they had to stop it. I tell you. UK's 1,012 charge to register children as British citizen is unlawful, High Court rules, but they're not doing anything about it. So what is the point of saying it's unlawful, but you're not doing anything about it? The 1,012 cost of registering a child for British citizenship was ruled unlawful by the High Court last month after the judge found a mass of evidence that it was preventing many children from being registered. The ruling means that the government will have to reconsider the fee, but it is not known when any review will take place. Yeah, right. They always have to make out like they're doing something. They let us know that they know that the system is unjust, so they put it out there. And then they also let us know that they're not going to do anything about it. They're not in any rush to sort anything out. You know, you just have to stick with it for goodness knows how long. Which is worse. It's just like, it's, it's not a form of torture, but it's just like, um, you know, when you're stirring the pot, you know, it's, it's like agitation. It's just like trying to aggravate people. And you're more or less saying, this is what we're doing. And we're going to take our time about, about it. You can't do nothing about it. If you don't like it, you can lump it. You don't have to stay here. You can go somewhere else. Go back to where you come from. That's what it's all about. If you don't like it, go back to where you come from. The same way with those who those who they deported and who are saying, you know, I've got my wife here and I've got my children here. You know, I've got no one in Jamaica. Bring your wife over and bring your kids over. If you're worried about them, take them out with you. All of you, get out of our country. Mr Khan said, the fact so many young people have no formal status was a national disgrace and called on the government to take urgent action by ministers to provide financial support to advice services, cut extortionate immigration and citizenship fees and reinstate legal aid for children's immigration cases. So why do they make it reach this far now? So there's a hun over 100,000. Why? So nobody never knew that before. When they were creeping up, but no, because they don't have immigrant children, not even not immigrant children. Sorry, they they're not on that on that level on that poverty line where it, they'd worry about um, whether or not they can afford the citizenship. More likely, their wife is British, they're British, so they're not going to know about things like this. And it it always comes out when it's reached the extreme. 100,000, why couldn't it come out when it reached 20,000 or 10,000 or even 25,000? Over 100,000 vulnerable children out there and young adults who will not be able to do anything because they'll just be like illegal immigrants who cannot do anything without documentation.
I don't think they can get a passport even though they've got they should be able to get a passport though if they've got a birth certificate shouldn't they be able to get a passport but I guess not if they're registered not if they're not registered <sighs> the Windrush scandal proved that the government's hostile immigration policies were not fit for purpose and swift action must be taken now to support our young people and prevent another crisis from taking place. Kamina Dorling, Quorum's Children Legal Centre, Group Head of Policy and Public Affairs, said the UK citizenship and immigration policy was failing a significant number of children who had grown up in the UK. These children are growing up in limbo instead of being legal citizens in a country they call home. No citizenship and immigration system can succeed if it excludes this many of the country's children and teenagers from legal status, she added. The Home Office spokesperson said they did not recognise the figures quoted in the report, adding there are a range of routes and options available for people of all ages to regularise their status, including children who have lived in the UK for most of their lives. And apparently they're, they're saying that, you know, as long as they are born in the country, they don't have to worry about regularising their status because um, they can regularise it when they get the money together. Problem is... While they're waiting to get the money together, the fees are going up and up and up. So it's like you try when you think you've got a thousand pound, a thousand and twelve pounds. Next thing you know, it's gone up to one thousand and five hundred pounds. So you can never catch up. And like I said, if you've got more than one child, that's like sometimes it could be if you've got three children, that's like five grand. You have to really be careful who you decide to have children for in this country and who you marry. Very, you have to be so, people think it's an automatic thing. People think, okay, I'm going to go over and I'm going to marry this woman. She's um, a British citizen and, you know, I'm going to have some picnic fiara and next thing we can, we can get in because of the children and stuff. And I saw it gone. Because if the man is not British, the child has no status. Especially if the woman is not British. You know, she might live in she might live in the UK, but you have to make sure she is a British citizen. And even then, I don't know if they changed it, and even then the woman couldn't apply for the child. It had to be the man. That's how chauvinistic this system is. They may have changed it. I'm not sure about that. But at one point, the, 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 the female couldn't get automatic citizenship for the child. And that was if the husband wasn't, um, I think if the husband wasn't British, but she was British. Anyway, they, you know, they have all these little intricacies all these little intricacies when you think you're sailing through you come to these roadblocks anyway like i said i'm not a legal i'm not a immigration lawyer i have no authority over any kind of immigration stuff you really need to see an immigration lawyer for your particular case so no point writing to me i've had some emails writing to me about immigration stuff i'm not an immigration lawyer you know, I'm just reading out information for you and just informing you, really. Anyway, you can apply to come to, and also, if you want a solicitor, just don't take up any deggy deggy solicitor. Make sure you go to gov.uk or you can go to Citizens Advice Bureau or you can go to, um, what else is there? There's another one, Home Office. They have their lawyers. Well, not their lawyers. They have recommended lawyers. But just make sure you just don't pick up anybody who's going to try and rip you off. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, you can apply to come to, you can apply to come to and remain in or become a permanently settled in the UK if you have a child who is either a British citizen or is settled in the UK. You may also qualify for a visa if you and your child are in UK and your child has lived here for seven years. Now, this is where it gets tricky. This is a firm of solicitors who say you can apply to come to 
remain in or become permanently settled in the UK if you have a child who is either a British citizen or is settled in the UK. Now, who is that for? Because if you are the parent, how did your child get British citizenship if you're not British? And that is where some people get pulled in and think, oh, yeah, I'm going to go and pay some money in and I'm going to come here based on my child because my child was born here. But supposing you've got somebody outside the country and your woman is in the country and she's settled and she's got settled status then, you know, where she's got, maybe she's got limited leave to remain or whatever. And she has a child who's born in the country. That doesn't mean that that child is a British citizen just because it's born in the country. And that's where you need to be careful, a lot of people, because they think that they can come on the, they can piggyback off of their children when the mother isn't, uh, the, the mother isn't English. And, you know, and just because she's got a child in the UK doesn't mean that you can then jump on the bandwagon. And so when you, I'm not saying that this, it can't happen because these are lawyers, they must know what they're doing, but you have to be aware that it's not straightforward. You have to make sure that, okay, your wife is, has got citizenship if she's in the country. Your child has got citizenship. She's paid for citizenship because if she's, if she's um, not British, but she's, if she's not born in the UK, I should say, and she has a child and it's born in the UK, you have to make sure that she, the child is registered before you leave where you are to come and piggyback on your child. But like I said, just get it all checked out. I don't know the ins and outs, but I know it's not that straightforward. I know it's a bit tricky. So you do need expert advice. Okay, so getting parent of a child visa. You can get the parent of a child visa if you are outside the UK, made a valid visa application as a parent, meet the suitability requirements in section SEC, appendix FM, and meet the following requirements. Relationship requirements, you must be aged 18 or over. Your child must be under 18, must be living in the UK, and be a British citizen or settled in the UK. I don't trust that settled in the UK, not with the way things are going. It's best that the child is a British citizen. You must also have sole parental responsibility for the child. So the other parent or carer with whom the child normally lives must be a British citizen in the UK or settled in the UK, not your partner and must not be eligible to apply for a partner visa. You must have sole parental responsibility. So how the hell, if you're not in the country and you've got a child in the UK who's a citizen, how the hell did it become a citizen? You have to be careful with these things, you know. Like I said, you know, what do I know? I've just got a very curious mind. You must also provide evidence that you have sole parental responsibility for your child or have access rights to your child. And you must provide evidence that you are taking an active role in the child's upbringing and intend to continue to do so. And what they mean by that, they want to see regular checks coming into the bank account made out to the child or the, um, the carer in your name regular, regularly. And they also need to see no, they also need to see that you've made active contact, whether it's by FaceTime, whatever it is, that you've been in contact with the child on a regular basis. Financial requirements, you must evidence that you have you will be able to adequately maintain the accommodate and accommodate yourself and your child in the UK without recourse to public funds. You must also evidence that you will be you will have adequate accommodation available in the UK without recourse to public funds. For the family which the family own or occupy exclusively and that such accommodate such accommodation will not be overcrowded 
or contravene public health regulations. People that are here, they can't even get in, so I don't even know where these people are going. The people that are here trying to stay and have legal applications, they can't even get stabilised. So I don't know where people are going, sending out and telling people that they should come over and um, they can come on their child's visa. When they know damn well the country is trying to get rid of people. If you're out there, it's no point coming to the UK. It really is no point. What are you coming for? You see what's happening to the people then. Why would you want to come here? Why? English language requirement, you must evidence that you are a national of majority English speaking country specified in immigration rules or have passed an English language test in speaking and listening at a minimum of A1 of CEFR with an approved provider or have an academic qualification recognised by the UK NARIC to be equivalent to the standard of a bachelor's or master's degree or PhD in the UK, which was taught in English, or are exempt from the English language requirement because you are age 65 or over, or have a disability, physical or mental condition, which prevents you from meeting the requirement, or there are exceptional circumstances which prevent you from being able to meet the requirements. If you meet these requirements, you will get a visa for an initial period of 33 months and subject to condition of no recourse to public funds. If, however, you do not meet any of these requirements, your application will be refused. So, if you're born here and you're legit, you're fine. But people coming from the outside, migrants, immigrants, you're going to have a tough time. Because they have... They're trying to reduce immigration. And it's no point trying, it's no point ignoring it and thinking, oh yeah, I'm still going to try and get in. I want to get in. I'm going to leave my good, good country and try to get to the UK or try to get to America. It's no point. This is not the time. They're reducing immigration. It's all over the news. So I don't know why people are still trying to come in. Anyway, what can I say? Everybody has a reason to do what they want to do. And, you know, some people, you know, they follow their dream and their dream is to come to the UK. Their dream is to go to America and they're willing to put up with anything in order to fulfill that dream. And if that's the case, they, you know, they're aware of their, they're aware of the consequences and what may or may not happen. For me, I don't know, but there again, I'm a bit, not, I wouldn't say I'm a coward, but I think if I was living in my country and I was reasonably comfortable, I wouldn't want to come and go through that harsh immigration process, scrutiny at the airport, you know, victimisation in some cases. I wouldn't want to go through that. I think, you know, let me steer with me there. But each one teaches one and we all have our own, like I say, we all have our own hopes and dreams. That's all I've got to say. Bye bye.